You can be seated. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I've been asked to begin this morning with a prayer, so if y'all would bow with me, please. Our Father in heaven, we thank you so much for all the good things that you do for us. We thank you especially for this the privilege of living this day and the privilege of being here with this group today. God, I thank you for each one here, and I pray that you put your hand on them, not only today, but in all their future endeavors, that you bless them and their families in all that they do. Uh, thank you for uh, the honor of being called your children. As through your son, we pray. Amen. Amen. Before we begin, let me just make a couple of remarks to you. First of all, welcome. We're glad that you're here. Um, I would much rather be doing this than a divorce trial. <laughs> I'd rather be doing anything than a divorce trial, actually. But um, I'm especially excited. I have three children, and they're all older than these, but uh, I know how much it would have, would have meant to do something like this, and we did some similar things, and so I know it's, it's a valuable thing. Um, let me say to all of you that are going to participate a couple of things. First of all, I admire the fact that you're here and you're doing this. Um, it takes courage um, to do stuff like this. Some of you it may come more natural to than others, but for those of you that may be scared to death, um, um, let me just make you do one thing. I'm going to give you one order this morning. Everybody stand up that's going to participate. It's got something you've got to say in public. I want you to take a really deep breath. You can let it out. <laughs> now, you, now you sit down. That's the best advice I can give anybody that comes in this courtroom is to take a deep breath and relax. I know you're prepared because I know that you work very hard and so be confident in what you do. What you're doing here today, whether you end up being a lawyer or ever step foot in a courtroom again will be so important in, in building confidence to prepare something and speak in front of other people. Even if you don't intend on being a public speaker, the ability to prepare and communicate your thoughts will be important no matter what you do, whether you're leading a small meeting or you're standing in a courtroom. Um, communicators rule. That's just the truth. People that can say something and articulate it and be clear with their thought, those people lead meetings, they lead nations, they lead courtrooms, and, and I have a feeling that describes you all. And so I appreciate what all that you're doing here um, today. Now, being prepared for a trial, and some of there's a couple of lawyers here in this courtroom, they can tell you, you, you can be prepared, but when you step in this courtroom, it's kind of like stepping into a ball game. I don't know how many of you play sports, but even, whether you play them or watch them, a ball game changes as the game. You don't know what's going to happen always during a, a sporting event. So you've got to roll with the flow. Now, I'm the referee. My only job is to make sure there's a fair game and that everybody gets a fair shake in the courtroom. I'm not part of the show. I'm not supposed to insert myself into the process other than to make sure everything runs the way it's supposed to, rule on things I need to, like objections that you may make. And you're going to, even though you've got somewhat of a script and you've prepared, something's going to happen during your trial that you don't expect. Somebody's going to say something different than what you thought. Uh, you're going to make an objection, and I'm going to rule in a way maybe you don't like or you think I'm, I'm wrong for. Um, and you, there's not a thing you can do about it except press on and not let it throw you off your game. So expect the unexpected, be confident, and just do what you've prepared to do. And I know you'll do a fabulous job. And again, I'm glad you're all here. So you can begin. The prosecution, which side is it? Are you going to begin with an opening statement? Or are you going to call a witness? Clark. And we are here to represent to you the case of my client, Sam Parker. 
As I said, my co-counsels and I are here to present my case, the case of my client to you, but I'm going to take a few moments to talk a little about Ms. Parker and what happened on the night of May 30, 2005. Sam Parker is an 18-year-old girl who works a part-time job at the Main Street Cafe delivering pizzas. She's lived in Abbeville, South Carolina her whole life. While making her deliveries in downtown Abbeville, Ms. Parker sees many people, and everyone knows that she always delivers her pizzas on time without fail. She delivers pizzas on her bike instead of in a car because she's more experienced with the bike and feels that it is safer to ride a bike. You are all here because of the events that occurred to Ms. Parker on the night of May 30th, 2005. On the night of May 30th, 2005, Ms. Parker was making up for lost deliveries after a long and relentless rainstorm that prevented her from delivering pizzas to her waiting customers. While making her final delivery of the night on her bike, Ms. Parker was returning to the Main Street Cafe on Pickens Street when a silver BMW driven by the defendant, C.J. Calhoun, struck her with deadly force and left her sprawled out on the pavement with a concussion, bleeding and injured. Now the defense is going to ask you to believe that Sam Parker ran into C.J. Calhoun's BMW out of recklessness and irresponsibility, when in reality, C.J. Calhoun blatantly disregarded state statute 56-5-1520-C, which clearly states that 30 miles an hour is the maximum speed in an urban district. Urban district means the territory contiguous to and including any street that is built up with structures devoted to business, industry, or dwelling houses situated at intervals of less than 100 feet for a distance of a quarter of a mile or more. Today we will call three witnesses to the stand. First you will hear from Terry Benjamin. She is a professional celebrity photographer and she will tell you about what she saw on the night in question and how it began. Secondly, we will call Tyvee Cumberland to the stand. Mr. Cumberland will tell you what he heard and saw before and during the collision. And lastly, you will hear from my client, Sam Parker. Ms. Parker is going to tell you about her job at the cafe, the people in her town, what took place the day of May 30th, and finally, what came the following evening. Once you hear the facts of this case and our witnesses' testimonies, I am positive that you will all find the defendant guilty of violating numerous state laws and striking the plaintiff down in a car with deadly force. This I am sure of. And to conclude the case, my co-counsel, Olivia Clark, will deliver a closing argument, and she will ask you to do the same as I, to return a vote of guilty. And finally, I would like to thank you for your time and participation in bringing justice for Sam Parker. <clears throat> May it please the court, your Honor, and ladies and gentlemen of the jury, my name is John Patrick Morton, and this is my co-counsel, Caleb Knapp. This case is about a local delivery boy out late at night attempting to make a deli pizza delivery. After making this delivery, Sam Parker, the delivery boy, began to head back to his place of work, the Main Street Cafe. However, instead of being cautious and reasonable, he purposely decided to break the laws of the road and illegally cut across the street in Court Square. Then, without looking, Sam Parker began to cross the street. That was when the plaintiff slammed into my client's car. I confidently expect the evidence to show that not only are the plaintiff's allegations against my client unfounded and unreasonable, that the plaintiff and even some of the other witnesses are at fault in this case. We will prove that the plaintiff was negligent in his operation of his bicycle and that he breached his duty as an operator of such a vehicle. Our first witness will be my client, C.J. Calhoun. My client is a famous pop star who, last year, received the distinct honor of winning a television singing competition which jump-started her career. C.J. Calhoun loved and cared for her hometown, and so to show that appreciation, she decided to begin her world tour there by giving a free concert for all of her dearest fans. I, I hope to use my client's testimony to show that our client is free of blame and that blame should fall upon the shoulders of some of the other witnesses as well as the city of Abbeville itself. Our second witness will be Madison Smith. Mrs. Smith is a city employee who works for the city of Abbeville. She took up this occupation after she originally retired from her old job. We hope to use Madison Smith's testimony to show that she simply did not see enough of the incident on May 30th to give a coherent, conclusive, or accurate description of what occurred. In addition, we will show that because of her criminal history, she should not still be working for the city of Abbeville. Our third and final witness will be Jordan Rawls. Mr. Rawls is devoted to his schedule. Everything he does from sunup to sundown is regimented. Jordan is an extremely organized person. 
We hope to use Mr. Rawls' testimony to show that the plaintiff is notoriously reckless and dangerous, seemingly put his, putting his paycheck above common sense. Thank you. Prosecution, call your first witness. Your Honor, I would like to call our first witness, Ms. Terry Benjamin. Okay, let's come up here, ma'am. Afterwards, did the sheriff confiscate your memory card? Yes. 
Did that card hold pictures of the incident? It did. Okay, thank you. That is all. Any further questions of this witness? Yes, except for my uh, four years at the State College. What is your occupation? I'm the manager of the downtown drug store. Where is your store? Off the court square. Did you know CJ when she was little? Yes. What was she like? She was very uh, wild and um, uh, energetic. Where were you on the night of the accident? I was locking up my drug store. Describe what you saw. Um, CJ sit by, I mean, uh, Sam sit by me, and I was wiping off my glasses from the humidity from the rain that happened earlier, and then I heard a car crash. Who all was there at the scene? Um, uh, Sam Parker, CJ Calhoun, Jordan Rawls, um, myself, uh, the sheriff, and um, Madison Smith, and then a guy taking pictures. Did Sam Parker seem hurt? Yes. What did you see the sheriff do? Um, he uh, went over and talked to CJ and looked like he got some sort of signature and then he went over and checked on Sam. Good morning, Mr. Cumberland. Good morning. So, uh, is it true that Sam Parker nearly ran you over on the night of the incident? Yes. After your little encounter with Sam, you testified you took off your glasses, is that correct? That is true. And the incident, or the crash happened just after that, is that correct? Mm -hmm. So you had your glasses off at the time of the incident? That's true. So all you saw was a flash of light, is that correct? That's true, yes. And is it true that you thought that was from headlight? Yes. So CJ Calhoun was in Abbeville for a free concert, is that correct? Yes, she was. And uh, is Madison Smith often parked in the road? Yes, she was. Has she ever been warned by the city council about parking in the road? Yes, she has. And is it true that Sam Parker rode through the square instead of around it? Yes. Does Sam often ride on sidewalks? Um, he tries not to, but sometimes he does, yes. Thank you. And would you say, have you seen him ride around the square the wrong way? Um, yes, maybe a few times. Not many, though. Thank you. And does Sam usually seem to be in a hurry? Yes, he sometimes tries to get home um, because his parents had a curfew for him. You tried to have signs with bike etiquette put on, on them put around the square, is that correct? Yes, I have. Was that partly as a result of Sam? Um, no. I didn't. And uh, is there a town ordinance prohibiting the operation of a bicycle on sidewalks? Say that again. Is there a town ordinance prohibiting the use of bicycles on sidewalks? Yes, but it's not enforced. Okay, and who did the sheriff say was at fault after the incident? Um, I'm not sure. All right, thank you. Your Honor, I would like to call on last witness, Ms. Sam Parker, to the stand. So I was biking home. What happened next? I was crossing the square, square excuse me, when, when, C, uh, when I don't know where CJ Cal Calhoun came around and struck me with deadly force. If you were hit, what happened? I was taken to the hospital in ambulance. Do you have any, did you have any major injuries? I had a concussion. Your Honor, I would like to enter the following exhibit to my 
to the spokes of my wheel. Are there any other modifications that you made? No. So at the time of the incident, did you have a reflector on your wheel spokes of your bicycle? Yes. In your witness statement, it says that you took those off and replaced them with bright blue reflective tape. Could you please clarify that contradiction? I'm sorry. Uh, yes, I did, have, uh, I did have blue reflector tape instead of reflector. Thank you. And so, do you recognize that it is illegal to operate a bicycle on a pedestrian sidewalk? Yes. And is it true that you have ridden on a pedestrian sidewalk multiple times before? Yes. Is it true that you, while riding on a pedestrian sidewalk, you have almost run over residents of Abbeville on multiple occasions? Yes. Is it true, or is it true that despite it being late at night, you begged your employer to allow you to make one last delivery the night of the incident? Yes. And is it true that the only reason you wanted to make that delivery was because the person you were delivering to was a notoriously great tipper and you wanted to make up your lost wages? Yes. Is it true is it true that your curfew requires you to arrive home by eleven PM? Yes. Is it true that it was ten forty five, only fifteen minutes away from your curfew, when you decided to start coming back back to Main Street Cafe from Grand Street? Yes. And is it true that you cut across the square to make it back to the Main Street Cafe sooner? Yes. And is it true that you did not stop before heading off the square and onto the road? Yes. So you committed illegal activity just for a little bit of extra cash at the end of the night? Yes. Is it true that in your witness statement you said that you could only remember bits and pieces of the incident? Mm -hmm. And so earlier you testified that my client, CJ Calhoun, struck you with deadly force, is that correct? Yes. And so if he struck you with deadly force, how are you here today? Lucky. So it wasn't deadly force since you are not dead? Well, I think when it comes to bike versus car, and it, like, the car usually is going faster, and so. Um, so. Can you please repeat the question? I'm sorry. <laughs> so earlier you testified that my client, CJ Hawkins, struck you with deadly force. Is that correct? <coughs> and so if he had, in reality, really struck you with deadly force, you would have been dead. But you are not, since the reason you are here is in court today. Yes. So could you please clarify, was it deadly force or was it not? I suppose it wasn't. Thank you, that's all. Any further witnesses from the prosecution? Prosecution has arrested their case, 1824. Okay. I'd like to call C.J. Calhoun to stand. concert to my fans. And what did you do after the concert? I went to a childhood friend's house for a get-together. When did you leave the get-together? I left around 10.20. Where were you going? I was going to back to my hotel. I had an interview at 10.30, so I was attempting to get back in time, although the call came in before I could get there. And then suddenly, Harry Benjamin pulled up beside me. 
How do you know it was Carrie Benjamin? Carrie Benjamin is the worst of the pap paparazzi. For some reason, she has now targeted me. She's been chasing me around town and knew she was at my concert. What happened as you approached the court square? She was following me and there was a mid but there was a truck in the middle of the road. What do you remember happened next? He was following me as we were passing the truck and then suddenly some guy on the on a bicycle came out in front of me with no reflectors or or head no reflectors or lights to indicate he was there. Okay, thank you. Uh what was your condition after the incident? I was hurting, bleeding, and quite scared. Where was your phone at the time of the incident? It was in the passenger seat. After the incident, I found it on the floor. I had not hung up on the DJ, though I had not been talking to him. And I told him what happened, and then I hung up. What did the sheriff say after the incident? First, he asked me to sign some papers. Then he said the incident was nobody's fault. And then Terry Benjamin showed up and started taking pictures again. Have you seen the plaintiff, Sam Parker, since the incident? He was at my concert and gave him free tickets, too. He was in the front row, and he seemed fully recovered, too. Thank you, Ms. Sutton. It was in Court Square. What time of day is it? It was at night around 10 30. Were you being paid? Yes. Did you have any headlights on? That is not in my witness to speak. <laughs> Were you planning to close your case today? She was around it before you did that. I was on I was in on an interview with a DJ by the same passenger seat. Um Terry Benjamin has said that the driver of the craziest of New York cab drivers. Do you think the lady in New York has influenced your driving and other habits in a negative way? No. Is it true that your family friends with the sheriff? My dad is friends with him, yes. Did you know Ms. Parker prior to the accident? Can you please repeat the question? Did, did you know Ms. Parker before the accident? Yes. Who, who do you think was injured? Or do you think she was injured? I think she might have been more hurt than me, but she has a lot of nerve to sue me. It depends if you were being safe on a bike or not. Have you spoken to Sam since? Yes. Why didn't you call an ambulance at the scene? It looked like she had plenty of help. You said you took the sheriff to take me to the center, is that correct? Yes. Did you ever get those documents? No, I didn't. doing deliveries as I clean the square. Could you please describe his bike riding? It is absolutely reckless. I often see him taking shortcuts, going the wrong way around the square, and riding on pedestrian walkways. Can you please describe the conditions of the night of May 30th, 2005? It had rained earlier, so that night was dark and wet. Could you share with us if you saw the plaintiff that night, if at all? Yes, earlier when I was parking my truck so I could start cleaning. Sam emerged right in front of my truck and I had to swerve in order to avoid him. I did not see any headlights or reflectors. Now, could you tell us where is your truck supposed to be parked while you were working? In one of the city council's designated parking spaces. And could you share with us where it was parked on this occasion? In the middle of Main Street. Do you believe it to be an, on the night of the incident, did you believe it to be an obstacle to the driver? Well, yes, I suppose. What were you doing just before the incident? Can you please repeat the question? Sure. What were you doing just before the incident? I was cleaning the square and I looked up to see a silver BMW being pursued by a black Cadillac. The driver of the Cadillac was yelling out the window, honking his horn, and seemed to be 
driving the BMW into the ground, closing in on his back bumper. So would you say the driver of the Cadillac, would you say his operation of the vehicle was reckless and dangerous? Absolutely. Could you describe the silver cars, the silver BMW he's driving? It did not seem to be going very fast. Okay, thank you. That's all. Objection, ask and answer. Yes, I have. What type of vehicle do you own? A truck. The search will not tell me what is the right one to say I don't have a good time on half the time. Is that your truck? Correct. Where do you usually park your truck when walking around town? It depends, but I sometimes park in the designated spaces and sometimes park in the middle of the road for convenience. Abbeville is a small town, so I would I would assume that there are rarely any newcomers. Do you remember if Jared and Mrs. Stewart knew you after the dangerous thing? After the accident? Can you please repeat the question? Do you remember if Jared knew you after the dangerous thing? I believe she asked for an autograph. Yes, and he told me to drink off my liquor, or sleep off my liquor. Um, what would lead him to come to the scene? Probably because he was the only one who had prior experience with <coughs> drinking on the job. Where were you when the accident happened? I was behind the Bell Big Bob, one of the monuments here in Abbeville, and I was cleaning that day. around the square at 7.20, eat lunch at 11.45, have dinner at 5.15, and walk my dogs around the square again at precisely 10.20 p.m. So you would say you're a fairly organized person? Yes. Could, uh, do you have any prior experience with our point with Sam Parker? He, he almost murdered my poor Chiquita when he was riding on his bicycle. Permission to go first, please? <laughs> I, I apologize, Mr. Holt. I understand this is a very touchy, sensitive subject. Thank you, sir. Um, but would you mind if I re-ask the question? Yes. So, do you have any prior experience with our plaintiff? He nearly killed my precious chihuahua while he was riding on his bicycle. Um, could you share, share with us what you did witness on May 30th, 2005 before the incident? Sam Parker nearly clobbered Tybee Cumberland while riding on the sidewalks again. Could you share with us what happened next? Grey Dog brought my attention to the opposite street where a silver BMW, which didn't seem to be driving very fast, and a black Cadillac were going down the street. The black Cadillac seemed like it wanted to drive that silver car into the ground. Uh, what happened after that? The silver car drove around the city of Abbey with a pickup truck that was why does Madison Smith always park her truck in the middle of the street? She always parks it in the middle of the street. So, did you see the attack? No, because her truck was in the way. And so, could you explain again, where, where was your truck, uh, truck parked? In the middle of the street, as usual. What have you seen Sam Parker doing since the incident? He's still riding around on the sidewalks like he hasn't learned a thing. Why is Sam not being stopped from his reckless behavior? The owner of the Main Street Cafe, who's on the town council, argued that his employees were good kids and that they didn't mean to frighten anybody. 
and they dropped the issue. All right. Thank you. That is all. I'm sure you have some cross examination. <laughs> <laughs> He has before, but I don't know if he has on multiple occasions. Does Sam Parker not apologize for the question? No. Because Mr. Parker has said that he did apologize for the question, and you did not accept him out of the on grad campus. I guess that is true. And it's also been said that your dog has heard your accent. My dog is, Chiquita is scared of bicycles because he almost ran over her with one. Do you remember? I do not know. Do you remember seeing any headlights on Ms. Calhoun's car? I do not think so. Do you have any further witnesses? Um, no. no, sir. All right. You ready for closing statements? my client, who is a hard-working, curfew-honoring young lady, because she was caused pain, hardship, and suffering, and deserves to be compensated for her loss of enjoyment of life. Sam was delivering pieces, which is her job, when she was brutally hit by CJ. Sam is one of the best pizza deliverers the Main Street Cafe has, and the people of Abbeville count on her to make her deliveries on time. But how could she do that if she is in constant fear of a, yet another reckless driver who could cause her the same pain and suffering. Immediately after the crash, Sam was rushed to the hospital while CJ was released with minor cuts and bruises. According to Terry Benjamin, CJ didn't even seem that concerned about her health or the plaintiff's health, but instead her car's condition. She says she heard her mumble, what a shame, it was brand new, and after that, scream at Terry, thanks a lot, I hope you're getting your Benjamins this time. Sam suffered a concussion, and CJ thought it would be appropriate to give her concert tickets to her next concert. No, she didn't pay for Sam's hospital bill or a new bike, but instead gave her tickets to her own concert. While Sam did attend the concert, I'm not sure she was thoroughly enjoying herself. If someone had asked Sam how she came by to get such great tickets, she probably would have responded, oh, CJ gave them to me herself, after hitting me with her car, that is. What a great way to end a concert. Article 11, subsection F, states, in essence, that in accordance to subsection A, you are to drive the proper reduced speed, what is prudent and what is lawful, and certainly when there has been certain weather conditions that have happened, like rain, sleet, or snow. All plaintiff witnesses say that CJ was not driving carefully and lawful or prudent, but instead speeding. Apparently, CJ thought that she was now a big, upcoming, famous star, that she could be the exception to the law and drive however she wanted to. And she still has not taken responsibility for her actions and paid the plaintiff rightfully. Witnesses testify CJ was distracted by, her, by other things and did not have full attention on the road. Even if she had put her phone on speaker and was no longer holding it, that doesn't mean she wasn't distracted by other things. Terry Benjamin, who was identified by CJ and was no longer a threat, was not only already identified, but she wasn't trying to ruin CJ. She was trying to help her in becoming a new upcoming star. Also, she might not have been talking on the phone anymore, but number one, I find that hard to believe since it's an interview, and an interview does not consist of only one person talking, and second, even if she was no longer talking on the phone, she could be distracted by listening to that other person on the conversation. As I have stated, CJ was trying to outdrive Terry Benjamin when CJ had already identified her and there was no real risk. CJ's testimony cannot be trusted. Sam says she never saw any headlights or heard a horn when CJ hit her. If CJ had had her headlights on, which is law, then Sam would more likely than not have stopped and waited before crossing the road. Second, CJ would more than likely have seen Sam in time and stopped in time if her headlights had indeed been on. 
Many witnesses say that CJ did not have her headlights on or they could not recall. More likely than not, if someone has their headlights on, we will remember that. Whereas if they did not, it would be harder to remember. CJ said in her witness statement that she gave an auditory warning to Sam prior the, oh, did not say in her witness statement that she gave an auditory warning to Sam prior the crash, crash or that she slowed down when she approached a still vehicle. Both of these actions are commanded by law. Also, CJ had slowed down when approaching the city of Abbeville service truck. She would probably have had time to stop before crashing into Sam. CJ should have to pay for what she did and suffer the consequences just like any other person would. This matter is important to not only me and my client, but also to those who strive for justice. That is you, the jury. You are the mediators of this age and the justice service for this great court. Thank you for your time, service, and willingness to help settle the disputes of the state. Thank you for bringing justice for Sam Parker. May it please the court, your honor, and the jury. I'm Kayla Knapp, and as you've probably already surmised, I'm one of the defense attorneys. My client, CJ Calhoun, was a victim of the chaos of the town of Abbeville, South Carolina. And yet, she is being sued for the negligence that is really that of the city and the other witnesses. I want you to imagine something for a moment. You win a major competition. You're over the moon. In the midst of your excitement, you decide to return to your hometown to give a free concert for your fans. In payment, you are chased by a woman who you believe is trying to ruin your life. And then, as you swerve around a city truck that is parked in the middle of the road, a teenager on a bicycle rams into the side of your brand new car. This is exactly what happened to the defendant in this case. As the evidence showed, on May 30th, 2005, the defendant, CJ Calhoun left her friend's home at 1020 to return to her hotel. On the way, Terry Benjamin chased CJ, trying to take photos of her despite CJ's wishes. Then, as she swerved around a city truck that was parked in the middle of the road, which should not have been there considering Madison Smith has been warned many, many times to park in her designated spot, but regardless has been allowed to both keep her job and drive a city vehicle. But I digress. As Ms. Calhoun passed through Madison's truck, the plaintiff, CJ, or Sam Parker, pulled out in front of her with no regard to either CJ's or her own welfare. Ms. Calhoun attempted to avoid him, but it was too late and she rammed into the side of her car. My client then lost control and slammed into the flagpole in the middle of the square, sustaining multiple injuries. Now, according to South Carolina Statute 56-5-1520, Article 11, Subsection A, any vehicle speed must must be controlled while entering the road to avoid colliding with another vehicle or conveyance. If the plaintiff had complied with this statute, we wouldn't even be here today. The plaintiff has said that my client was negligent. However, they never proved negligence. They said she was speeding at over 30 miles per hour, but never brought up a specific speed. None of the witnesses are experts, and none of them had equipment to test the speed. In summation, C.J. Calhoun was not the antagonist in our case today. In fact, she was just as much, if not more, the victim. It was not her fault that the city of Abbeville employed workers who ignored rules and were not fired. It was not her fault that Terry Benjamin has seemingly targeted her. It's not even her fault that an imprudent juvenile was allowed to break the town's ordinances on biking on numerous occasions with little to no repercussions. Last thing before I end, I would like to remind the jury that the burden of proof lies with the plaintiff. They have in no way come close to meeting that burden of proof. For all these reasons and more, you, members of the jury, must rule in favor of the defendant. Thank you. We're going to be in recess for 15 minutes. According to the clock, so we'll resume at 9.30. Uh, if you'll be back and ready to resume at that time with your, your second trial.